Hello, my soccer universe. Welcome to the review of the Serie A action. This is the first review vi video now for the weekend. Let's first let's do headlines. Uh, Midweek fixture headline: We have Torino uh, fighting back and actually getting themselves out of the relegation zone. However, it was not for long to be. We had, of course, the two biggest stories uh, and. We can do it from the negative and from the positive. I think I want to do the positive first. With pretty big wins for Milan and for Napoli, um, who are definitely for, for Milan it kind of confirms their ambition to go into a Champions League spot, and for Napoli, uh, staying very much in the race for the Champions League spot. Conversely, big losses for Juve and Roma. For Roma, going into the Champions League looks pretty bleak now. For Juve, yeah. I didn't think, but there might be a discussion whether Juve can finish top four on current form. They look not like that, but I think the season is still long enough. We also had a big game for, uh, between Inter and Sassuolo postponed because of COVID uh, in, in the Inter squad. Now we move to the midweek game and the games in general. As I said, Torino um, against uh, Sassuolo. First half was all Berardi who scored two really nice goals in the 6th and the 38th and you think, oh, Sassuolo is going, uh, is going to win this one and, prob and, prob and probably putting Torino into even more trouble. And it looked really for the long, longest times. I mean, um, uh, agree, um, there were changes made uh, during the game, but Zaza is the one that was really, really providing a change. He came on in the 72nd, he makes uh, the goal in the 77th to make it 1-2 and yeah, game on. Still, Zazola looked like, 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 like cruising, but then the goalkeeper spills uh, the ball in, in a way, uh, goes to Mandragora, who can tap it in. 2-2. Two, two. And... In a very surprised move, Belotti comes off and Bolazzoli come, 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 comes on, but uh, Torino still can find a winner. Uh, Ansaldi's cross is hit, uh, is met with the head by Zaza, who puts it in the internet. And if you have seen this as the celebrations, you could see uh, actually that there's very much life in this Torino score because everyone, including all the reserve players, everyone running on, on, on the pitch and celebrating that win. Because Torino now, still with the game in hand, moving ahead of Cagliari and moving out of the relegation zone. And if you look at the chances right after the game, actually looking quite, I don't want to say comfortable, but uh, not a spot on of, of being re relegated. Uh, so big win for them and probably ending all hopes for European um, spots for Sassuolo in a way as well. Um, and then came the uh, uh, weekend games, I, I saw only, shall I say, two halves. <laughs> no, I saw one, one, one and a half games uh, and I saw highlights. Um, the big story, of course, was that Inter Sassuolo, which was my Saturday evening game, that's why I could shoot the video on the uh, jersey with stories, that got postponed because there are too many COVID cases in the Inter squad. Uh, from what I hear, even uh, Lukaku and others are not even allowed to travel to the national team. So, uh, situation we have to uh, observe and let's see how the, with the international is going. Um, uh, the games are coming fast and I have to prepare for that one as well. But, you know, I hope that Tuesday evening I will get to that and give you which games to watch out for during the international break as well. So yeah, that was a big story. I honestly was not too unhappy. Uh, I mean, of course, everyone said, yeah, Inter, uh, everyone's trying to stop Inter. Nah, I think this was really right. And I personally was not too unhappy because with Sassuolo just having lost to Torino uh, and Inter, you know, I think it was all right. Give Sassuolo also some time to prepare for Inter. Uh, and maybe Inter gets a meet with game, uh, which also will help a little bit. Uh, we'll start though with the games that we'll review. I mean, a uh, big result, Genoa beating Parma. I think Parma, uh, Genoa really getting themselves out of trouble there. Um, also, Spezia win over Cagliari was a pretty big win there. I didn't see anything uh, of these games, but I think Genoa and, and Spezia kind of pushing Parma and Cagliari further down the relegation zone, which I'm not happy about really because, um, you know, I'm really afraid I'll lose two jerseys back there. Yeah, 
Let's see. Maybe Kievo will get promoted and I have to get another team. Uh, if Torino make, maybe makes it, I think I definitely have to get a Torino jersey sooner or later. In any case, let's uh, games I saw highlights. I watched highlights for uh, Hellas against Atalanta. Oh, this was all Atalanta. Atalanta could, could have won this by a whole lot more. The first one was a penalty that converted by Malmanowski after handball. Uh, you know, like this kind of showing away clearly. And then Zapata may, may exercise when he also hit the post once. Uh, Muriel uh, missed, missed a big one. Verona was not really in that game, to be honest. So, yeah, I think fully deserved win by Atalanta. Uh, I am not sure I want to say fully deserved win by Benevento, but that Benevento wins at Juventus, I think, was a huge, huge, huge upset. And probably, um, yeah, I mean, uh, of course you had more chances and, and so, but it didn't look all that great. What looked great, though, is to see Inzaghi and Pirlo uh, meet up before the game. Yeah, they won a couple of Champions Leagues together and they are... I know Pirlo is not as well seen by the Milan fan, but I still adore him in Sorcerer with that, that type, type of player he was. And for me, um, getting rid of Pirlo is one of those um, big moments where the course of two teams completely changed. And you cannot even blame Milan at that point for getting rid of Pirlo, but that's the way it was. So, yeah. Uh, you having changed, ah, yeah, Ronaldo also getting his gold uh, jersey with 770 because now he passed Pelé. I already told you last week, I don't uh, think much of record records like these, but we have to mention it. So, yeah, uh, Benevento playing it tight. You were playing in dark blue at home, Benevento in white. Uh, it's another thing I didn't understand, but I guess you want to sell more of those dark, dark jerseys, but they will not sell very well after that uh, performance. And uh, with our well, what was it? Artur, who spills up, up the ball, it falls to Geik, who puts it into the net. Uh, and then you probably had a call for a penalty that could have been given, but overall, I think. Benevento got the win. And I have to say, when I saw that result, yes, I guess I guess, I guess then, uh, the whole day up until till evening, we were not, not at home, so I didn't see. When I saw that result in the halftime of, of, of Fiorentina Milan, where I started watching, I was, whoa, if Milan wins that one, that would be a huge result. It was also one where, you know, Atalanta is now better and it has big implications and we will see whether Juventus will get into trouble. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But first, Lazio getting back to winning with Sampdoria, beating Torino. Uh, also, Sampdoria kind of safer. Torino, they should have gotten something out there to feel a little, a little bit safer. We need to talk Fiorentina Milan, of course, and as I'm wearing one of my favorite Milan jerseys, one that was in the video, and uh, five jerseys with with stories. Uh, it was a crazy game because uh, from what the commentators told me, and I actually, I actually believe it from the highlights, in the first half, uh, there was not, I mean, both teams were kind of trying to go for it, but it was not clear. But if it the ball came, came into, the, into the box or near the goal, it was a great chance. I mean, Ibrahimovic scores the first first goal after, after Kia uh, pass, where um, it was Quarto who was uh, uh, not in the line and put uh, Ibra onside, who's lost, lost his home, make, makes 1 0. However, Pulgar with a great free kick in the 17th um, gets the game level. Then uh, Fior Fiorentina, I think, with a back heel out of uh, volley, um, hits the post. Ibrahimovic is also played free uh, with a great shot and hits the bar. I think there were a, a good chance by Jalen no Nogli as well, but it ends 1-1. Uh, most crucially, um, Taragovski, the Fiorentina goalkeeper, had to come off and Terracciano, uh, the uh, replacement goalkeeper, car come, comes on. And having seen how things work with replacement goalkeepers, the goalkeepers that come in, they are not giving you as much safety, and especially if you have not been playing a whole lot. Still, Fiorentina had the better start to the half, and Vlahovic um, really um, nicely can secure the ball, plays it back to Ribéry, who slams it in the internet 2-1, and I'm, oh yeah, again, another one after Europa League performance, um, Milan is gonna lose, lose the one, but I actually saw already, not only did they realize that there is a goalkeeper that's a little bit shake, shaking there, they kept on going for it, and very uh, quickly get actually the equalizer, uh, when Kier, Heads the ball. I mean, I, it was not really head. I, th I, I think even with the shoulder, 
Two or two, 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 two goal where the goalkeeper is a little bit uncertain. Brian Diaz uh, can pull it in the internet. He's standing right there. Two, two. Game on. Um, right after that, Castillejo and Benazir come on and Milan more and more takes control of the game. Uh, Zlatan, with a, he, I think he wanted to make a cross goalkeeper, is completely misjudging that, that one and he hits the post uh, again. Um, and then another attack. I mean, it did, it, this was then a game that went back and forth and was highly entertaining because both teams tried, tried to play forward, but Milan more and more getting color, especially with Benazir coming on, I have to say. I really liked the way the game was then going. Um, and Kessie plays a ball that's almost a looked almost a little bit misplayed, but with great shooting technique, Charlie Noglu finds the corner and uh, it is 3-2 uh, Milan. Fiorentina is trying to, pr uh, to press, but I always had the feeling that uh, Milan was closer to making it 4-2 than uh, Fiorentina actually getting it to a uh, draw. Given that Juve lost and Atalanta won, this was a huge win for Milan, as we will see in the table. And then all Darby della so uh, Sole. Uh, Napoli having again the good fortune of playing a team right from the fresh from the uh, Europa League. At that point, I knew, yeah, Roma will have it tough in there. And Napoli was the better, better team at first. And they get the first goal through a wonderful Mertens free kick that was even more made special because they were um, Napoli players making a wall. And then just as the free kick was taken, they are rushing away from it. And the uh, ball was struck, uh, struck nicely enough that the goalkeeper had no chance. It was a great, great, great um, trick there. And also the second goal by Mertens was a 100th Serie A goal. Uh, deep ball uh, finds Paul Napolitano, who heads it directly to Mertens, who can head it in the net. Yeah, the little uh, midget <laughs> heads it in. 2-0 uh, for Napoli and Napoli cruising. Napoli, of course, playing in these wonderful jerseys as well. Um, yeah, and the Roma also. I mean, uh, this is one of the better jersey matchups in Serie A for sure, uh, the way it was played there. Uh, Roma take a while, find a way back, but I think more than a... Uh, hitting the post through Pellegrini and having here and there a chance did not really come and so Napoli gets a vital, vital win which means in the table now Inter of course having now a game in hand still very much uh, in control for, for a title and with Juve losing even more so they actually improved their chances and Milan is now having a smidgen of a chance to get the title but I think Milan is really now the only team that may challenge you know Juve has a game in hand against Na Napoli but that game also looks now not a foregone conclusion anymore but you know everything can change after, after the international break there's always a little bit of a rupture in there so we have still many 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 games to go 10 uh, games and for Inter 11 so a uh, lot lots of things can happen in there but the way it looks like is Inter will cruise to the championship uh, and Milan probably will finish top four as with Atalanta and Juve but Napoli watch out for Na Napoli right in there Roma I have five points out now and as I said if Napoli wins the game in hand against Juve they would be ahead of ahead of you and you is in trouble um, and you could miss out of top four. I still say you started a project. Don't blow it up now again. I mean, since Ronaldo is here, you had three different coaches. You need to stick with the program. And I want to say the same thing for Roma, uh, especially when you can't consider with what Fonseca had to deal with. Um, first of all, Zaniolo. Absolutely, first of all, Zaniolo. Second of all, man managing two comp competitions. They have been doing really well in the Europa League and uh, also in Serie A. Then you had the Jacob situation where uh, is he coming, is he going, uh, is he staying, is he, is, he, is, he, is he going, then the bust up in there, then uh, the change of directors upstairs, then, as I said, Zaniolo is injured, you have other injuries. Well, I think he's doing a great job and they're playing very very at, uh, attractive i think if he is given a little bit more time roma can grow into something really really interesting down the road um and i wish they're not uh putting as much pressure on um fonseca i know roma is a great crazy team as they actually do at the moment i also think that gattuso definitely deserves to stay in the napoli job but you know let's see where uh, this will end up. As I said, with the wins on the bottom, it's really Cagliari and Parma now very much in, dan in, in danger. There's a clear-cut 
uh, Torino not not winning and still being one of the winners of this match day. Um, I wanna adjust if we adjust you were still ahead of At Atalanta, but as I said, the Napoli game is not a foregone con conclusion. Uh, also, Torino with a game in hand um, will not change all all the margin. The game is as far as I see against Lazio, so not a game that you are expected to win. Expected final standings, it tells really the story. We have a proper race for the fourth spot, but uh, you can already see Roma is not really in there anymore. The two Roman teams will probably not challenge for the Champions League. It's actually can Napoli break uh, into uh, where Atalanta and Juve are at, at the moment. Milan sort of looking safe, but they are also the lowest rated team among those. So I also have that in mind. I think they're even uh, they're on par with Lazio. Uh, as far as Ray rating goes on the bottom, they uh, are clear. Next time we see Serie A, we have a two-week break, and then we see it on the Saturday before Easter, uh, and all games are uh, played on the same day. Early game, Milan-Sampdoria. Um, I think we have a Turin, uh, Turin derby. So solo Roma wo was more interesting in the fall, I have to, I have, have to say. Um, yeah, I think... Um, Bologna Inter is probably a potential tra trap game, as is Atalanta Udine. There's something about this game that I find a little bit curious. So, yeah, that was it from me. Uh, let me know what you thought about the games that were played uh, this weekend. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get an update whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, wish you a wonderful day. Bye!